Welcome to To Life L'Chaim. On today's show, we'll talk with Bela Gansberg about Jewish childhood education. And first, we'll meet with the Chief Rabbi of Uganda, Rabbi Gershom Sizomu, right after these messages. Joining us today is Bela Gansberg, the director of the South Florida Jewish Academy. Bela, thank you for joining us in the studio today. Tell us why your school is so unique and what sets it apart from other day schools. Our school is a special needs school, but what's very interesting about our school is besides it being a special needs school, we have typical children. Typical children that um, are not diagnosed, but have not been successful in other schools. And we also have special needs children, um, children with ADHD, children with, on the spectrum, children um, Down syndrome, CP, and they're all learning together and they each have their own individualized curriculum. So the stronger ones really help the, the weaker ones and they learn, uh, um, you know, the weaker ones learn from the from the ones that are more advanced. And how much uh, Hebrew do they get? I understand it's a mixed curriculum. So what's a typical day for one of your students it like? It is a mixed curriculum and um, we do have, since it's individualized, it's really based on the individual child. So some children might have half a day of Judaics and some children might have a little bit less based on their ability to do the different subjects and to have the dual curriculum. Tell me a little bit about how South Florida Jewish Academy mm -hmm. came to be. How did it come from an idea to a reality? What's interesting is it really was never an idea. It was something that just happened by mistake. Um, parents heard that we had purchased the building. We were going to open a preschool. And parents came in and asked us to please start a special needs Jewish school that there was none like this around. And after much begging from many parents, um, we decided to try it and see how it goes. And once you try a school like this, there's nothing more you could do but continue going. Oh, it's interesting. So you, they came to you, so you had an instant, an instant niche and following. Mm -hmm. And a little bit about the process. Um, how did you become involved in ESC teaching? It grew mm -hmm. out of the school? It grew out of the school. Very <clears throat> And how many students do you have right now? Right now we're pretty much to capacity. We have 40 children in our building and we're looking to expand. And what kind of learning challenges do you work with? You mentioned some, but what's the broad spectrum? Well, 50% um, of our children actually don't have any diagnosed special needs. Um, they just had low self-esteem. And because of that, they were told that they couldn't succeed. And that's one of the main things of our school is <clears throat> that we teach a child to, <clears throat> excuse me, to succeed and to feel good about themselves. And the special needs part, the Judaica component, it, it's a very complex program. How many staff do you have? We have a very large staff um, body. We have, for each class, we have, besides the Judaic teacher, we have two teachers with each classroom. We have many volunteers. We have special teachers, um, occupational therapists, physical therapists, um, speech and language professionals. Um, then we have uh, PE, self-defense. So we have a lot of extras also. I w watched one of the videos on your website and I saw how incredibly happy all the kids were as they were learning. And what's your secret to that? I mean, these are must be children who are unhappy in other environments. Like I said before, once they feel that they could succeed and they do succeed, then they have a new found, you know, self-respect and self-esteem and they feel good about themselves and what they're doing and that's what makes them happy. Uh, the school I know is going to um, into some new areas you've never been before. I saw one of the uh, things on your website called your Spacecraft Sensory Suite. What is that and how does it help the children? That's actually what's called a snoozlin room, which is a sensory integration room. Um, a lot of special needs children have problems with sensory integration. 
And bringing them into that room has really, really um, proven to be an amazing benefit for these children. It's a calming effect. It's also sensory integration and... Um, so what, what, what do they do? What? There's a bubble tube, there's a touch screen, and based on the different motions and different things that a child needs, either help in focusing, help in integrating sensory um, things into their daily schedule, we build that into some of our students' schedule. Like I said, we have a touch wall which shows cause and effect it also helps the child focus. Um, you might see on our video, we have a child that takes a letter, a uh, number, and moves it from the right corner to the left corner. That actually takes a lot of focusing because if they lift up their hand, that number changes to the next number. I see. So they'll have that. We also have a um, endless tunnel, which causes the children to focus to the middle of the tunnel. And it's really created by a bunch of mirrors I know you also have the kids involved in the community. You've started a program called um, the Bear Givers Empowerment Program. What, what goes on with that? The Bear Givers Empowerment Program was started by um, JBS Financial out of New York City, and they have a Bear Givers Program where they work with different schools to empower the children. What the children do is they go to nursing homes and hospitals and to other schools with lower functioning children, and they bring them teddy bears and make them feel good by giving them gifts and in effect the children themselves feel really good in seeing other children and adults feel good about themselves. So it's really an amazing program. They also had an art show where our children were the artists and it was an Addison Gallery in Meisner Park and um, the parents came and people from off the street came and purchased the kids artwork. And it was really a great thing to make so these kids. So where can people go to find more about the school and, and become involved if they wish? We have a website. It's um, www.floridajewishacademy.org. We have two amazing videos, um, one that shows a, the school actually in action and the, some of the kids. We also have another video which shows our mission, which is a PowerPoint of different animals and what they're able to do and what they're not able to do and that each one's an individual which is the same as our school. Each cool. child is an individual. So. Bela, I want to thank you for coming in today and sharing with us and I want to encourage our listeners to go on and learn more about the school and the work that you do for so many of the children in the community. Thanks for coming in and sharing this with us. Thank you for having me. That's it for this edition. Don't forget to visit our Facebook page for all the latest news about our program. I'm Lee Lazerson. Thanks for joining us on To Life L'Chaim. <laughs>